Have you ever wondered how some people remain calm and clear-headed even in the most turbulent moments of life? Today, I invite you to join me in a reflection on life guided by the principles of Stoic philosophy, which teaches us to face adversities with balance and wisdom. In the next few hours, we will explore 21 strategies, lessons and insights that will help us cultivate resilience and mental clarity. We will learn to accept what we cannot change, to have the courage to change what is within our reach, and the wisdom to distinguish these differences. Take a moment to settle in comfortably and allow yourself to absorb the lessons that have guided sages and thinkers through the ages. It's time to begin our stoic journey. Now, if you are new here, please like the video and subscribe. Statistics show that only 15% of my audience is subscribed to the channel, so if this content has helped you in any way, I ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, let's start this transformative journey together. Rule 1. Become mysterious. The allure of the unknown is captivating, and within that mystery lies your power. As Seneca wisely stated, being everywhere is being nowhere. Let this guide you. Be present, but maintain an air of mystery, akin to a book with some chapters subtly veiled, inviting others to leaf through the pages with growing intrigue. In conversations, do not reveal everything at once, but measure and thoughtfully unveil the plot of your life thread by thread, allowing others to weave their interest and curiosity into the empty spaces. This approach transforms you into an enigma, a puzzle to be solved, heightening their anticipation and drawing them deeper into the labyrinth of your character. Consider the historical figure of Cleopatra. Her allure was not solely in her beauty or power, but in the enigma she cultivated around her. She was a leader shrouded in mystery, her motives and thoughts often obscured, making her an eternally fascinating figure in history. Let your actions and words be unpredictable, like a winding path through unexplored territory. This unpredictability magnetizes others, drawing them closer in their quest to understand the depths of your being. By not exposing your entire life from the start, you invite them to explore, discover, and be part of your journey. Your life is not an open book for everyone to read, but a series of unfolding chapters, revealing more of the complex and fascinating individual that you are. By preserving this air of mystery, you become an irresistible presence leaving others longing for more. Discover how to control your emotions and unlock your true potential with our Stoic Guide. Rule 2. Create the fear of losing you. The common human tendency to disregard what is easily accessible changes drastically when there is a risk of loss. Imagine yourself as an irreplaceable entity in their lives, someone whose absence leaves a huge void. You are not just another option. You are a vital necessity. This is achieved by embodying the essence of independence and self-sufficiency. Your life is a fascinating journey, complete and satisfying in itself, regardless of their presence. It is this air of confidence and autonomy that attracts people to be part of your life, not as a basic right, but as a cherished privilege. This approach aligns with Stoic philosophy. As Marcus Aurelius once said, you have power over your mind, not over external events. Realize this and you will find strength. Your strength lies in your self-sufficiency and the unique adventure that is your life. People will begin to understand that you are not just someone seeking their attention, but a formidable presence in their lives they will begin to realize that you are not here to chase affection or beg for scraps of attention. You are here to be sought after. They should be the ones striving for your attention, therefore subtly foster the fear of losing you, allowing them to actively seek to be part of your world, recognizing it as a valuable treasure. You are not just a participant in this game of life. You are an essential element they cannot afford to lose. 
Rule 3. Happiness. This principle emphasizes the belief that true happiness is an internal creation. It is about embracing self-confidence, satisfaction, and independence, traits that inherently make you more attractive. Instead of relying on others for your joy, you cultivate your own sense of fulfillment. This independence and self-assurance bring with them an undeniable allure, making you more attractive to those around you. People who radiate confidence and positivity are naturally magnetic. By achieving happiness within yourself, you become a beacon of hope and inspiration for others. By creating your own happiness, you send a message. You are not seeking to be completed by someone else. You are a complete and content individual on your own. This approach is attractive because it does not burden others with the responsibility of making you happy. Your goal is not to find joy in another, but to share the joy you have cultivated, thereby enhancing the lives of those around you. Your presence becomes captivating, radiating the light of positivity and confidence that inevitably draws others in. The Stoic philosopher Seneca once said, True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence on the future. This quote encapsulates the essence of generating your own happiness. Rule 4. Be valuable and allow others to invest in you. Understand that you are a rare find, a gem that others should aspire to have. Your value does not merely lie in being present, but in being a significant and intentional part of someone's life. Remember that what is easily obtained is often little valued. True appreciation arises from effort and commitment. As others invest their time, emotions and energy in your life, their attachment to you strengthens, transforming you from a fleeting interest into an appreciated presence. Your role is not to desperately seek their attention or love, but to show that you are a significant and enriching addition to their existence, worthy of their sincere pursuit. Allow the opportunity for them to invest in you, making your presence a cherished aspect of their lives that they would not want to do without. Reflect on the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca. A gem cannot be polished without friction, nor a man perfected without trials. This embodies the essence of your value, which does not lie merely in being, but in being sought after and fought for. Rule 5. Do not make them the center of your life. It is crucial to remember that your life should not completely revolve around another person. Imagine yourself as a solitary and luminous star, shining in the night, fueled by your unique light and vitality. You have your own path, independent of anyone else's orbit. It is important not to allow your world to narrowly center around another person, making them the epicenter of your existence. You have your own dreams, ambitions, and you are a distinct entity. This mindset creates an enigmatic attraction, keeping them intrigued by the facets of your life and what drives you. Your autonomous spirit and adventurous attitude add an attractive dimension to the relationship. It is about complementing each other's lives while maintaining your uniqueness without placing them at the core of your existence. Your appeal and allure grow as you live a life outside unnecessary entanglements. Setting boundaries allows you to continue developing, bringing excitement and a refreshing sense of freedom to your association. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic philosopher and king, once said, He who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. This quote resonates deeply with the principle of maintaining your independence in relationships. Rule 6. Prioritize your own needs first. This rule emphasizes the supreme importance of putting your own needs and well-being first in any relationship. It is essential to assert your value and avoid situations where you are undervalued and not treated with the respect you deserve. You have a deep understanding of your own worth and refuse to settle for less. Your happiness and self-esteem 
are not subject to compromises with someone who does not treat you with the necessary care and respect. By prioritizing your own needs and happiness, you are making a clear statement. You will not allow anyone to belittle your feelings or diminish your self-esteem in any association. You are an equal where your emotions and needs are of utmost importance. Remember, you are not here to be overshadowed or seek approval from others. Your goal is to foster healthy and respectful relationships based on self-respect. Standing up for your interests makes you more attractive and influential in anyone's life. In essence, this rule is a reminder that your well-being and self-respect are supreme and always come first. Rule 7. Do not always be available. The rarest things are the most valuable. Gems are not found on every corner. Similarly, your availability should not be limitless. Recognize the value of your time, which should not be freely dispensed at the mercy of others. Prioritize the narrative of your own life. Imagine a life where you are not constantly on standby, where your existence is anchored to the expectations of others. You have your own universe to explore, and those who enter it have that privilege. Balance is key. Avoid being perpetually available, waiting for their messages or attending to their needs at every turn. Demonstrate that your time and focus are valuable. People are naturally attracted to those who have their own passions and agendas. When you are not simply waiting aimlessly, it piques their interest. They start to reflect on their commitments, thus cultivating a sense of longing. Continuous availability suggests that they can access you at their whim. But remember, you are not just anyone, you are an investment. It is not about playing games, but showing that you have a vibrant life with or without their presence. By not being always immediately available, they learn to value the time they share with you. Rule 8. Stop starting without finishing. The essence of Rule 8 lies in cultivating a balanced approach to initiating communication in any relationship. It is about understanding that constantly starting conversations may not always be beneficial. Allowing the other person to take the initiative on occasions is vital. This approach not only demonstrates that your life is full of other interests and activities, but also serves as an indicator of their interest in you. Perpetually initiating contact could inadvertently send a message of being always available, perhaps too eager. This is not about playing mind games, but about fostering a sense of mutual respect and effort in the relationship. Marcus Aurelius once said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injury. In the context of communication, this means not reflecting behaviors that might lead to imbalance or feeling taken for granted. It is about maintaining your dignity and self-respect without embarking on an unrelenting pursuit of attention or validation. Rule 9. Do not get too emotionally attached. The art of emotional balance on the path to becoming a priority in someone's life emphasizes the importance of not allowing your emotions to dominate the dynamics of a relationship. Ensure that your needs are not only heard, but also respected. It is about finding the right balance between sharing your feelings and maintaining a level-headed attitude. While emotions are an integral part of who we are, their overexpression can sometimes cast a shadow over our true value. In the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca, the best remedy for anger is delay. This quote encapsulates the essence of Rule 9, exercising patience and control over our emotional responses. Finding this balance is crucial for your presence in any relationship to be valued and for you to maintain your dignity and self-respect without being overwhelmed by transient emotions that can negatively affect your interactions and mutual respect within a relationship. Rule 10. Be willing to walk away. Embracing the power to distance yourself from a relationship that does not honor your worth is the essence of Rule 10. 
This rule highlights the vital importance of recognizing your value and maintaining unwavering self-respect. It is crucial to establish clear boundaries and expectations about how you wish to be treated in any relationship. When these standards are not consistently met, it becomes imperative to have the courage to move on, regardless of the emotional ties that may exist. This action is not heartless, but rather a crucial act of self-care. It is a testament to your dedication to self-respect and a firm rejection of sacrificing your well-being for someone who does not appreciate your worth. By showing your willingness to withdraw, you also send a powerful message to the other person, highlighting the seriousness of the situation. This realization may lead them to understand the importance of prioritizing and valuing you if they wish to continue having you in their life. Your goal is not to cling desperately to relationships that do not enhance your joy and self-esteem, but to cultivate relationships that are healthy and based on mutual respect. Sometimes this means finding the strength to let go when necessary. We have explored 10 key strategies for you to become an unforgettable presence in others' lives. They include maintaining a sense of mystery, not being excessively available, allowing others to invest in you, and prioritizing your own needs. It is crucial to find a balance in how you communicate and ensure that you are not centering your life completely around another person. Cultivating your own happiness and emotional stability makes you more attractive. Remember that it is essential to value yourself and be ready to walk away from relationships that do not appreciate your worth. It is not just about seeking attention, but about forming healthy relationships. By incorporating these principles, you become someone that others naturally want to prioritize. If at any point you feel like you are just an option, remember that you have the power to make decisions in your life, including the choice to walk away. Your value is immense, and you deserve people who recognize and honor that. As we conclude this video, I encourage you to take these ideas seriously, reflect on them, and make a personal commitment. Share this commitment in the comments to affirm your dedication to living as your best self. Have you ever wondered how Stoic philosophy can help you face the challenges of the modern world while balancing your personal life and social exposure? In this video, we will delve into one of the most impactful and transformative philosophical currents of all time, Stoicism. We will explore not only the fundamental principles of this philosophical school, but also the negative impact that can arise from overexposure to others, along with practical strategies to manage this appropriately. We will discover how Stoicism not only provides a practical approach to facing everyday challenges, developing emotional resilience, and finding inner serenity amid adversity, but also how to wisely manage our interaction with the social environment. Join us on this journey to understanding and practical application of Stoic philosophy, addressing both its benefits and its possible challenges. I invite you to stay until the end, where you will find lessons for all your plans in the face of any adversity. If this is your first time on my channel, please help me by subscribing and liking the video so I can continue creating more content like this in the future. Through its teachings on mastering our emotions, accepting what we cannot control, and focusing on what is within our hands, Stoicism offers us tools to live with greater clarity, purpose, and serenity. In an era where constant exposure on social media and the need to share every aspect of personal life have become the norm, Stoic philosophy offers a refreshing and contrary perspective. The practice of modesty and discretion holds inherent power in keeping certain aspects of life private and protecting oneself against the tendency to seek external validation. This approach not only promotes mental tranquility and self-sufficiency, but also shields us from the volatility of others' opinions and the fleeting nature of external recognition. For Stoics, serenity comes from self-mastery, not from others' approval. 
It teaches that true freedom and peace lie in living according to our values and principles without needing to expose every thought, action, or achievement. At the heart of Stoicism is the idea that self-control and self-sufficiency are fundamental to a well-lived life. By choosing what we share with the world and what we keep for ourselves, we exercise this control, strengthening our character and resilience. This video will explore how the Stoic practice of not exposing oneself can be a path to a more focused, balanced, and ultimately more rewarding life. In our lives, some things are like seeds. We plant them away from curious eyes so they can grow and flourish without interference. This is where the wisdom of the Stoics comes in. They teach us to protect and cultivate within ourselves without haste to show the world. The great Stoic thinkers of history knew that not everything should be shared. They valued their secrets, achievements and lessons because they understood that by revealing too much about the true essence of things, it could be lost. Every joy and sorrow, every lesson and challenge are pieces of the story we compose, and if we share everything without thought, we may fail to live deeply. Just as a flower does not grow if constantly touched, our growth also needs privacy, a personal space where we examine our mistakes and victories and decide how we want to move forward in the best way. When we do not share something, it is not to hide it, but to protect it. True growth comes from balancing what we show and what we keep to ourselves. In a world that loves to show everything, it can sometimes be challenging to recognize and appreciate what lies behind our achievements. Imagine diving into the dark, deep waters of your own soul. For the Stoics, the quest for wisdom and virtue was akin to this deep dive. They believed that true fulfillment was not in displaying external triumphs, but in introspection and continuous evolution. Each challenge, each struggle, was not fought in public arenas, but in the silent landscapes of the spirit. When discussing their victories, the Stoics offered us a profound reflection on ego and vanity which, when fed, can become barriers separating us from true virtue. Their obsession with external recognition, they said, binds us in chains of pride, imprisoning us in a vain quest for fleeting applause, a path full of disappointments. However, here lies a valuable lesson. The true achievement is not the one paused to be admired, but the one that quietly transforms the community nurturing noble values such as justice, compassion, and wisdom. For these ancient sages, wealth was not accumulated in coffers, but in the depths of a balanced and serene soul. Instead of celebrating triumphs or collapsing in defeat, they embraced a calm acceptance of life's whims. They invite us to recognize that life's dance is orchestrated by melodies often beyond our control. In this remarkable silence, we find a deliberate choice, a commitment to true greatness. They believed that true majesty resided in living with integrity, dedicating oneself to the collective. They left us with the legacy that humility, sincerity, and the relentless pursuit of wisdom were the true pillars of a life worth living. Do not talk about the challenges not overcome. On the stoic path to wisdom and virtue, each step was full of meaning. Misadventures and obstacles were not mere impediments, but sculpted the soul, formed the character, and taught about the true nature of greatness. It was not the visible triumph that counted, but the internal, often invisible battles that determined a person's inner strength. But if these struggles were so valuable, why did the Stoics advise not to talk about the challenges not overcome? The answer lies in their keen perception of human nature. They believed that ego and pride could cloud our vision, making us blind to true virtue. The relentless pursuit of external recognition and praise could indeed be a veil obscuring our true potential. The Stoics did not value achievements that could be easily shown off as trophies, 
but sought true glory in acts that elevated humanity, acts rooted in values such as justice, generosity and wisdom. True wealth for them was not in the gleam of gold, but in the glow of a morally upright character and a tranquil soul. The philosophy of Amor Fati, or love of fate, was fundamental to this understanding. The Stoics did not despair in the face of adversity. Instead, they balanced the taste of victory and defeat with equanimity, aware that life's tapestry is woven with threads of circumstances often beyond our control. Do not speak of your good deeds. Imagine a candle quietly illuminating a room. Its light is soft, discreet, but warms and illuminates everything around it. Goodness, for the Stoics, was much like this flame. They believed that true generosity did not need to be proclaimed in public squares or shouted from mountaintops, but should, in its essence, be a genuine and done for the simple desire to do good without expecting praise in return. This may seem strange in the current culture of self-promotion, but for a profound reason. The Stoics recognized the danger of turning goodness into a spectacle. After all, if we boast of every altruistic act, we could inadvertently seek the warm applause, feeding our ego. By keeping our good deeds under the cloak of anonymity, we create a sacred space for reflection and pause, a moment of intimate connection with ourselves, where we can question whether our actions are genuine or motivated by other interests. This secret self-analysis becomes a catalyst for personal improvement. At the heart of Stoic philosophy lies the belief that true goodness does not seek the spotlight. It manifests in silent and authentic acts of compassion. This timeless wisdom envelops us with its essence and reminds us of a fundamental truth. Often, the greatest act of kindness is the one offered without expecting anything in return. Do not talk about your resentment have you ever felt trapped in a web of emotions where each strand is a bitter memory, a resentment that refuses to fade? The timeless wisdom of Stoicism invites us to reflect deeply on the invisible weight of resentment. For these ancient philosophers, harboring resentment was like an anchor preventing the spirit from sailing freely through the seas of life. But what if we could choose a less traveled path? where forgiveness and understanding were our faithful companions. Behind this historical perspective lies an unwavering focus on virtue and self-control. Ask yourself, have you ever carried a burden on your back for too long? Have you felt the fatigue, weariness and resentment? This burden is an invisible chain that binds us, limiting our freedom and inner peace. It is fascinating to realize that often resentment arises from misunderstanding and can imprison us in a cycle of bitterness. The Stoics encouraged us to seek the origins of others' actions, to understand before judging. Thus, forgiveness is not only an altruistic gesture, but a profound act of wisdom that unveils the mysteries of the human soul and frees us from the chains of negativity. Because anger and resentment are silent poisons that, the more fed, consume our tranquility and well-being. On the other hand, by choosing the path of forgiveness and understanding, we find an oasis of serenity and peace. Thus, guided by Stoic wisdom, we are reminded of a universal truth. Forgiveness is the key to our own freedom. It is a beacon guiding us through emotional storms and offering refuge in the harbor of serenity. By embracing this lesson, we discover that sometimes the greatest strength lies in letting go, freeing ourselves from the chains of the past and sailing towards a horizon of understanding and peace. In this remarkable silence, we find a deliberate choice, a commitment to true greatness. They believed that true majesty resided in living with integrity, dedicating oneself to the collective. They left us with the legacy that humility, sincerity and the relentless pursuit of wisdom were the true pillars of a life worth living. Do not talk about the challenges not overcome. On the stoic path to wisdom and virtue, each step was full of meaning. 
misadventures and obstacles were not mere impediments, but sculpted the soul, formed the character, and taught about the true nature of greatness. It was not the visible triumph that counted, but the internal, often invisible battles that determined a person's inner strength. But if these struggles were so valuable, why did the Stoics advise not to talk about the challenges not overcome? The answer lies in their keen perception of human nature. They believed that ego and pride could cloud our vision, making us blind to true virtue. The relentless pursuit of external recognition and praise could indeed be a veil obscuring our true potential. The Stoics did not value achievements that could be easily shown off as trophies, but sought true glory in acts that elevated humanity, acts rooted in values such as justice, generosity and wisdom. True wealth for them was not in the gleam of gold, but in the glow of a morally upright character and a tranquil soul. The philosophy of Amor Fati, or love of fate, was fundamental to this understanding. The Stoics did not despair in the face of adversity. Instead, they balanced the taste of victory and defeat with equanimity, aware that life's tapestry is woven with threads of circumstances often beyond our control. Do not speak of your good deeds. Imagine a candle quietly illuminating a room. Its light is soft, discreet, but warms and illuminates everything around it. Goodness, for the Stoics, was much like this flame. They believed that true generosity did not need to be proclaimed in public squares or shouted from mountaintops, but should, in its essence, be a genuine and done for the simple desire to do good without expecting praise in return. This may seem strange in the current culture of self-promotion, but for a profound reason. The Stoics recognized the danger of turning goodness into a spectacle. After all, if we boast of every altruistic act, we could inadvertently seek the warm applause, feeding our ego. By keeping our good deeds under the cloak of anonymity, we create a sacred space for reflection and pause, a moment of intimate connection with ourselves, where we can question whether our actions are genuine or motivated by other interests. This secret self-analysis becomes a catalyst for personal improvement. At the heart of Stoic philosophy lies the belief that true goodness does not seek the spotlight. It manifests in silent and authentic acts of compassion. This timeless wisdom envelops us with its essence and reminds us of a fundamental truth. Often, the greatest act of kindness is the one offered without expecting anything in return. Do not talk about your resentment have you ever felt trapped in a web of emotions where each strand is a bitter memory, a resentment that refuses to fade? The timeless wisdom of Stoicism invites us to reflect deeply on the invisible weight of resentment. For these ancient philosophers, harboring resentment was like an anchor preventing the spirit from sailing freely through the seas of life. But what if we could choose a less traveled path where forgiveness and understanding were our faithful companions. Behind this historical perspective lies an unwavering focus on virtue and self-control. Ask yourself, have you ever carried a burden on your back for too long? Have you felt the fatigue, weariness and resentment? This burden is an invisible chain that binds us, limiting our freedom and inner peace. It is fascinating to realize that often resentment arises from misunderstanding and can imprison us in a cycle of bitterness. The Stoics encouraged us to seek the origins of others' actions, to understand before judging. Thus, forgiveness is not only an altruistic gesture, but a profound act of wisdom that unveils the mysteries of the human soul and frees us from the chains of negativity. Because anger and resentment are silent poisons that, the more fed, consume our tranquility and well-being. On the other hand, by choosing the path of forgiveness and understanding, we find an oasis of serenity and peace. Thus, guided by Stoic wisdom, we are reminded of a universal truth. Forgiveness is the key to our own freedom, 
It is a beacon guiding us through emotional storms and offering refuge in the harbor of serenity. By embracing this lesson, we discover that sometimes the greatest strength lies in letting go, freeing ourselves from the chains of the past and sailing towards a horizon of understanding and peace. Do not talk about others. Criticizing others is like throwing stones into a calm lake, creating waves that disturb the water's tranquility. The Stoics understood that engaging in judgments and criticisms was a distraction from their own internal mirror, wasting precious energy on matters beyond their sphere of influence. Instead of pointing fingers, the Stoic chose to extend a hand. They were guided by empathy and compassion, recognizing that each person is a universe full of internal and external battles, joys and sorrows, victories and defeats. Criticizing another person would be failing to recognize the richness and complexity of the human condition. They also realized that criticism, instead of building bridges, often erected walls. In their quest for tranquility and harmony, they understood that harsh words and hasty judgments did not lead to peace, but to discord and separation. Stoic wisdom sends us a clear and timeless message. We must be guardians of our words and thoughts. Instead of focusing on others' faults, we should turn our gaze to our own reflection, seeking growth and virtue. In a world where criticism is easily cast, Stoic teachings inspire us to embrace understanding, acceptance and kindness, casting stones of empathy into the lake of humanity and appreciating the waves of positivity they generate. Do not talk about your moments of solitude. While many seek to fill every second with stimuli and interactions, the Stoics found strength and tranquility in quietude. They did not see solitude as a void to be filled, but as a sanctuary where the mind could dance freely, free from the chains of others' opinions. Contrary to what many might think, the Stoics did not reject solitude, they embraced it. In their moments of retreat, they did not feel isolated but connected to a rich internal universe full of ideas. It was in this quietude that the deepest thoughts emerged, untainted by external noise. In today's scenario, where validation through social media has become a priority for many, Stoic philosophy invites us to reevaluate these priorities. By stepping away from the constant need for exposure, we find a space where our soul can breathe. It is in this profound silence that we discover the melody of our essence, a sound that does not need to be shared, but simply felt in its purity and truth. Do not talk about unlearned lessons. Few things are as universal as mistakes. We all fail. We all make mistakes, but it is in the response to these failures that a person's character truly reveals itself. For the Stoics, these moments were not of despair, but of revelation and growth. Many of us in our contemporary society feel the pressure of an image of perfection. We show our triumphs and hide our defeats, but the Stoics show us a different approach, accept mistakes not as a sign of weakness, but as a map for self-improvement. By choosing to keep their unlearned lessons private, the Stoics were not trying to evade their responsibilities or hide from their failures. Instead, they protected themselves for a process of deep and intimate reflection. Each failure was seen not as an end, but as a beginning, a new chapter in the continuous pursuit of virtue and wisdom. Just as an artist transforms a mistake into a crucial part of their work, the Stoics transformed their failures into foundations for growth. In a world where information overload and overexposure are common, the Stoic posture reminds us of the value of introspection and the dignity of silence. Do not talk about your deepest plans. Understanding that there is no need to shout your plans to the world is a powerful weapon. The Stoics understood something many of us forget, that discretion is not a weakness, but a strength. For them, each plan or goal was like a delicate seed that needed to be tended with care and protection. 
By avoiding premature exposure of these plans, they ensured an environment for growth and flourishing, away from doubt, envy, or public scrutiny. Today, in an era of overexposure where every move is documented and shared, Stoic philosophy invites us to rethink how we handle our ambitions. It shows us that true power often lies in what is kept secret, not because we are evasive, but because we recognize the importance of cultivating our dreams in a safe environment. Silence for the Stoics was not empty. It was full of possibilities and hope. It was the fertile ground where their dreams could grow undisturbed. Thus, amid the chaos of our modern age, we might find inspiration in these ancient sages protecting our deepest plans, allowing them to develop at their own pace, free from interference. And by doing so, we may discover that the true magic lies not in what we declare to the world, but in what we quietly achieve in the corners of our determination. In a world where the fear of failure often holds us back, it is time to face our doubts and transform them into steps to success. Failure is part of the journey and there is no shame in it. It is easy to feel that fear is an insurmountable obstacle, but the truth is that it is simply a natural part of the path. A barrier that separates you from the experiences you desire in life, in your career and in your growth. Whether it is the fear of public speaking, flying, talking to your boss or expressing your feelings, these fears limit your potential and prevent you from living life to the fullest. So why does fear stand in our way toward our aspirations? Often it arises from a lack of self-confidence. When we doubt ourselves, it is easier to avoid taking risks and exposing ourselves. But if we truly want to live our lives to the fullest, we need to break free from these limitations. Stoicism begins with a fundamental recognition. Adversity is an intrinsic part of the human experience. No one, no matter how fortunate, is exempt from the trials and tribulations that life presents. The Stoics, from Epictetus to Marcus Aurelius, understood that fear and challenges are not aberrations, but certainties. By acknowledging this inevitability, Stoicism teaches us not to be surprised or defeated by adversity, but to expect it and embrace it as an opportunity for growth. This shift in mindset is the foundation of emotional resilience. By embracing fear as an opportunity for growth, it becomes a source of strength. Instead of avoiding or fearing challenges, we should face them with the understanding that they offer opportunities for personal development and resilience. The Stoic principle of Amor Fati, or love of fate, suggests that we should not only accept our challenges, but embrace them wholeheartedly. Through this, we transform fear from a paralyzing force into a catalyst for personal growth. Adversity becomes our teacher, and we emerge from it stronger, wiser and more resilient than before. Redefining success and failure is a crucial part of Stoic philosophy, which emphasizes inner peace and resilience in the face of life's challenges. In modern times, success is often equated with material wealth or external achievements. However, Stoicism suggests that true success lies in doing the best we can and striving for virtue. The Stoics believe we should focus on our own actions and behaviors rather than on external outcomes. This means that whatever happens, we can always take pride in having given our best. Instead of worrying about winning or losing, we should concentrate on doing our best. This approach to success can be liberating because it removes the pressure to always achieve more and also promotes humility since we recognize that many factors beyond our control can influence the outcome of events. By focusing on our own efforts, we avoid giving too much importance to external validation. Similarly, Stoicism teaches us to view failure as an opportunity to learn rather than as a reflection of our worth. When things do not go as planned, it is easy to become discouraged and feel like a failure. 
but Stoicism encourages us to see failures as opportunities to learn and improve. By reframing failure in this way, we can turn it into a positive experience. Instead of lamenting what went wrong, we can examine why it went wrong and how we can do better next time. This perspective helps us become stronger individuals. Believing in yourself is the foundation of the timeless wisdom of Stoicism, providing a remarkable platform to conquer fear and live a life of purpose, resilience and inner strength. Believing in yourself is not just a cliché, but a powerful force that can move mountains and dispel the clouds of doubt and fear. Stoicism holds that, at the root of most of our anxieties, is a lack of self-confidence. We often underestimate our abilities, magnify our weaknesses, and doubt our potential. In Stoic philosophy, true self-belief is a manifestation of wisdom, a deep understanding of our own strengths and weaknesses. It is the knowledge that within us lies the capacity to face any challenge life may present. By believing in ourselves, we harness the power to transform fear into a stepping stone rather than an obstacle. In a dizzying modern world, finding peace and purpose can be a challenge, but do not worry, Stoicism has the answer. Explore the wisdom and practicality of this ancient philosophy, learn to create a daily routine that leads you to unparalleled balance, growth and serenity. Stoicism is your ally in the journey to a more virtuous life. With figures like Epictetus, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius as guides, this philosophy has stood the test of time and remains relevant to help you be stronger, calmer and thoroughly satisfied. Ready to transform your life? Join us on this adventure of self-discovery as we explore how to create a morning and evening routine that will propel you towards greatness. Wake up each morning with enthusiasm and reflection on the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. These are the moral compass for making wise and courageous decisions, always seeking balance in all aspects of life. Gratitude will be your powerful ally. Embrace gratitude for all the blessings, experiences, and people that enrich your existence. You will discover how appreciation fills you with joy and frees you from any trace of dissatisfaction. Anticipate the day with a powerful perspective. Practice negative visualization, facing possible challenges and wisely preparing to adapt and grow in the face of adversity. Through writing, you will bring stoic magic to life. Keep a journal where you record your intentions, emotions and observations. This will be a beacon of wisdom and guidance, reminding you of your path even in the most challenging moments. You prepare to face the world with stoic elegance. Learn to maintain focus and productivity in a world full of distractions. Practice justice and compassion in every interaction, opening your heart to a deeper understanding of the human experience. Face stress with composure and perspective, remembering that you can only control what is within your hands. Wisdom will guide you when the night comes and it is time to recharge. Reflect on the day's events, learn from your experiences and grow with each step. Embrace imperfection and commit to constant improvement. Set your intentions for tomorrow and chart a powerful and courageous path. A future full of wisdom, courage, justice and temperance awaits you. By practicing these principles, you can develop the mental fortitude to face your fears with courage and wisdom. In this modern and dizzying world, finding peace and purpose can be a challenge. But with Stoicism, you have a powerful tool by your side to help you live a rich and fulfilling life, shaped not by fear, but by love of wisdom and virtue. Thus, we cultivate the resilience to face life's storms and emerge stronger on the other side. Resilience in adversity. By redefining success and failure, Stoicism endows us with deep resilience in the face of adversity. The Stoics recognize that life is full of uncertainties, 
and that things often do not go as planned, but they encourage us to embrace these uncertainties with open arms, seeing them not as obstacles, but as opportunities to grow. In the Stoic perspective, the path to success is not a linear ascent, but a journey full of setbacks, ups and downs, with each step, regardless of the outcome, being a success in itself. It is a chance to be better, to refine our virtues, and to align more closely with our true values. Stoicism emphasizes the importance of building emotional resilience. This means developing the ability to face adversities, setbacks, and discomforts. By voluntarily pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone, we strengthen our emotional muscles and prepare ourselves for life's inevitable challenges. Adopting a growth mindset, we understand that we can learn, adapt, and conquer fear. In doing so, we redefine our limitations and expand our comfort zone to include what was once unthinkable. Pushing beyond the comfort zone is challenging. Our comfort zone is like a cozy cocoon that provides a sense of security and predictability. While it may be comforting, it can also be limiting. Fear often lurks just outside its boundaries, preventing us from venturing into the unknown, pursuing our dreams, or realizing our full potential. Stoicism recognizes this innate human tendency to cling to the familiar and encourages us to confront the root of our fear. By disabling our anxieties and acknowledging their existence, we begin the process of moving beyond our comfort zone. The first step in the process of self-discovery and personal overcoming is identifying your fears and anxieties. It is crucial to take time to reflect on which aspects of your life make you feel uncomfortable or insecure. This self-assessment will allow you to better understand your own emotional and mental obstacles. Once your fears are identified, it is important not to let them paralyze you. Instead of avoiding facing them, Stoicism teaches us to challenge them directly. Facing our fears head-on allows us to grow and surpass ourselves. Stoicism also reminds us of the importance of reason in overcoming fears. By objectively analyzing the situation that causes us fear, we can discern whether that fear is based on reality or is simply a product of our imagination. Often, we find that our fears are exaggerated and irrational. By facing them with logic and reason, we can diminish their power over us. Once we have challenged and overcome our fears, we will find ourselves in a state of greater fortitude and mental clarity. This process of self-discovery and overcoming will allow us to grow as individuals and achieve our maximum potential. Taking calculated risks is part of Stoicism, which does not promote recklessness in the pursuit of growth, but encourages making thoughtful decisions. By facing challenges and changes in a rational and reflective manner, we minimize risks and maximize growth opportunities. The Stoics believed that intentionally facing fear and discomfort was a profound source of strength. Through these encounters, we grow, evolve, and discover our true potential. By pushing our limits, we realize that we can handle more than we initially thought. The journey is as important as the destination. In our modern world, where success is often measured by the achievement of specific goals, ancient Stoic philosophy offers a refreshing perspective. Success is not seen merely as the attainment of wealth, fame, or status, but as the pursuit of wisdom, virtue, and inner peace. In this context, success is not simply reaching a specific goal, but embodying a way of life, a journey guided by noble principles. Stoicism redefines what is often perceived as failure in the conventional sense. For the Stoics, there is no true failure as long as we have learned and grown from our experiences. The path is full of moments that can be seen as opportunities for growth, not as defeats. Maintaining inner equanimity is essential. Stoicism teaches that while we cannot control external events, we can govern our internal responses. 
By practicing maintaining equanimity in the face of adversity, we strengthen our emotional resilience. This resistance lies in recognizing that we can control our reactions and therefore our emotional state. Remember that Stoicism does not aim to completely eliminate fear, but to manage it effectively and transform it into a tool for personal growth. By practicing these principles, you can develop the mental fortitude to face your fears with courage and wisdom. Finding peace and purpose can be a challenge in a fast-paced world, but Stoicism offers the answers. Exploring its wisdom and practicality can lead to unparalleled balance, growth and serenity. It is your ally in the journey to a more virtuous life, guided by historical figures like Epictetus, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, whose teachings continue to inspire and strengthen those seeking a full and balanced life. By embarking on this journey of self-discovery with Stoicism as your guide, you can cultivate a daily routine that not only supports your ambitions, but also promotes a profound balance between mind, body and spirit. Waking up each morning with intention, reflecting on the four cardinal virtues, wisdom, courage, justice and temperance, prepares you to face the day not just with competence, but with moral excellence and integrity. Gratitude is a powerful tool in Stoicism. Recognizing and valuing every blessing, experience and person in your life transforms the daily perspective, filling it with joy and dissipating dissatisfaction. This practice not only enriches your life experience, but also solidifies your contentment and inner peace, fundamental for facing adversities. Visualizing the day's challenges realistically is a concept known as negative visualization. It prepares you mentally for possible difficulties and strengthens your ability to adapt and grow from these experiences. Daily writing, such as keeping a journal of reflections, intentions and emotions, becomes a reservoir of personal wisdom, offering constant guidance and reminders of your path and progress. By approaching each day with this stoic mindset, you empower yourself to maintain focus and productivity even in a world full of distractions. Practicing justice and compassion in all interactions not only improves your relationships, but also opens your heart to a deeper and more empathetic understanding of the human condition. Facing stress with composure and a well-adjusted perspective reminds you that you have the power to control only your actions and reactions, a stoic principle that alleviates the weight of uncontrollable worries. At nightfall, when it is time to recharge, reflecting on the day's events helps to learn from each experience and cultivate wisdom for future challenges. This moment of introspection is crucial to accepting imperfection and committing to continuous improvement. By setting clear intentions for the next day, you chart a deliberate and courageous path for the future, filled with the virtues you have defined as essential, wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Each day becomes an opportunity to live these virtues concretely, bringing you closer to a truly virtuous and fulfilled life. Therefore, by following Stoicism, you not only face life with a stronger and more resilient mindset, but also with deeply rooted peace and purpose. This approach not only transforms individuals, but has the potential to positively influence those around them, creating a more conscious and harmonious community. In summary, Stoicism offers more than coping lessons. It provides a framework for living a rich and full life, aligned with values that promote personal and collective growth. As a time-tested philosophy, it remains a source of strength and serenity in a world that often seems chaotic and overwhelming. By adopting this philosophy, you empower yourself not only to overcome challenges, but to transform each moment into an opportunity to live more fully and meaningfully. Be the architect of your life using Stoicism as your tool. Customize your journey towards success finding the formula that fits your dreams, values, and daily commitments. 
Stoicism is versatile. Do it your way. Keep your passion for Stoic practice and establish a constant and consistent routine. Stoicism offers a path of transformation and growth. Discover the magic of bringing Stoicism to every aspect of your life, infusing wisdom, courage, justice and temperance into your relationships, work and personal projects. In a world of changes and uncertainties, Stoicism will be your guide to balance, resilience and inner peace. Embrace life with purpose and clarity on the Stoic path. Move forward with strength and conviction. Wisdom will always be by your side and each day will be an opportunity to grow and learn. May clarity and serenity always accompany you in your quest for a full and meaningful life. Practice gratitude and wake up with a heart full of joy and abundance. With the four cardinal virtues lighting your way, direct your attention to all the blessings that enrich your life. You will discover that appreciation and gratitude will dissolve any shadows of dissatisfaction or persistent desire. In this state of sincere gratitude, you will greet the day with a sense of fulfillment and happiness, focusing on what truly matters. Cultivate the habit of being thankful for all that is good and constantly give thanks for everything that has contributed to your progress. You should include everyone in your gratitude. Prepare for the day with negative visualization. Imagine the possible challenges and setbacks that might arise, but do not worry. You are prepared to face them with wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. By contemplating these scenarios and their possible outcomes, you will develop a silent resilience, ready to adapt and grow in the face of adversity. This exercise will allow you to navigate the uncertainties of the day calmly without being shaken by the fluctuations of fate. Now is the time to record your wisdom and reflections on paper. Keeping a journal is a powerful tool used by Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. Dedicate a few moments each morning to write about your intentions, emotions and observations. By doing so, you will create a beacon of wisdom and warmth that will guide you through the challenges of modern life as we move through the ever-changing landscape of daily life. You have now reached the halfway mark of the video. I congratulate you for trying to become a better version of yourself and I also humbly ask you to leave a comment as it helps my channel immensely. If you do not know what to comment, just write mind over body so I know you reached this far. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Also, I've linked some books on Stoicism that helped me become the man I am today and will also help you achieve a Stoic mindset. We may face moments that test our determination, but don't worry, Stoicism has the answer. Through a series of historical strategies, you will maintain balance, cultivate resilience and embark on the journey of life with grace and strength. When stress arises, remember that wisdom is within you. Seek refuge in reason and reflection. Focus your energy on what you can control and let go of what is not in your hands. In this way, you will respond to stress with composure, resilience and wisdom. The primary task in life is simply this, to identify and separate things so that you can clearly say what is external and uncontrollable and what is under your choices and control. Where to seek good and evil, not outside the uncontrollable, but within yourself and in your choices. Remember Epictetus' words on your path to gratitude and resilience. Stoicism will guide you with timeless wisdom. Wake up with the certainty that each day is an opportunity to grow, learn and strengthen. Embrace life with purpose and clarity on the stoic path towards a full and meaningful life. Turn distractions into opportunities for productivity. In the whirlwind of modern life, distractions are constantly lurking, but as a brave stoic, cultivate the virtue of temperance, practicing self-discipline and moderation. When these distractions arise, accept them, 
but gently redirect your attention back to the task at hand. This will nurture inner calm and allow you to harness the power of your mind to achieve your goals. When interacting with others, manifest the stoic virtues of justice, wisdom and compassion. Each encounter offers the opportunity to leave a positive and lasting impression. Be mindful of the impact of your words and actions on those around you. Through each interaction, learn, grow, and deepen your understanding of the human experience. Today, you will face interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will, and selfishness. All of this is due to ignorance about what is good or bad. But as for you, you have long recognized the nature of good and its nobility, the nature of evil and its pettiness, and also the nature of the offender, who is your brother, not in a physical sense, but as a fellow human being endowed with reason and a portion of the divine. Therefore, none of this can harm you, for no one can involve you in something degrading, nor can you be angry with your brother or feel annoyed with him, for he and you were born to work together as two hands, the feet or the eyelids of a man, or the upper and lower rows of his teeth. Obstructing each other is contrary to the law of nature, and irritation or aversion is a form of obstruction. Marcus Aurelius teaches us to embrace adversity and flourish in resilience. During the journey of life, we encounter unexpected challenges in times of adversity, which can either strengthen or break us. As brave Stoics, we see these challenges as opportunities for growth, cultivating courage and wisdom to face adversity with grace. Practice negative visualization. Trust in the inner resilience you have cultivated on your stoic path. In this way, you will transform trials into valuable lessons, steps on your path to growth and personal fulfillment. Prepare for a night full of wisdom and reflection. As the sun sets and the day comes to an end, Turn your attention inward. Reflect on the events of the day, identifying challenges, decisions, and lessons. As Seneca said, it is crucial to constantly monitor one's behavior and even more useful to submit each day to review, for this is how we avoid becoming evil. None of us reflect on our own life. We only contemplate what we are about to do and our plans for the future derive from the past. Forgive yourself and move towards personal improvement. Practice self-forgiveness with compassion and understanding, recognizing that personal growth is a continuous process. Learn from your mistakes and commit to improvement. Nurture peace and self-acceptance as you continue to evolve on your stoic path. Set intentions for the new dawn. With the wisdom gained throughout the day, incorporate stoic virtues into your actions, decisions, and interactions. In this way, you will create a harmonious and purposeful model of life guided by the principles of stoicism. Dive into a night of relaxation. Before surrendering to sleep, practice relaxation techniques like deep breathing or meditative visualization. Calm your mind and body releasing the tensions of the day and thus prepare for a restorative sleep, ready to greet each new day as an opportunity to grow and learn. Therefore, even in the most challenging moments, strive to see beyond yourself, accept the order established for you and live with serenity. This is what it means to love your own fate. However, it is crucial to distinguish between acceptance and resignation. Resignation is negative, implying a refusal to act in the face of the unpleasant. On the other hand, acceptance is positive, recognizing what exists and guiding action according to what happens to us. As you can see, a Stoic avoids resignation and seeks acceptance, and in acceptance, the Stoic dichotomy of control is fundamental. Generally, events in the universe, such as health or illness, disasters or miracles, life or death, are not under our control. We cannot change them, and therefore, our hearts should not be affected by them. 
However, what is under our control are our judgments about what happens and our will. As Epicurus said, well, the will can control itself, but nothing else can control it. We have the great power to choose what we do and how we react to the circumstances and desires imposed upon us. We can choose between fleeing from our own fate or accepting it and facing it as the path that has been designated for us and in which we must seek our happiness. This is stoic freedom, to choose to accept our fate and align our will with virtue and good, or, on the other hand, to choose to reject our reality and seek vice and evil. The essence of good and evil lies in the attitude of the will, says Epicurus, and Marcus Aurelius would add that the truly good things, such as virtue and justice, are within the power of man, provided by the gods so that he can avoid them if he wishes. In any situation, whatever it may be, it is in our hands to react by seeking good or seeking evil. For example, if we are ill, we can fight to try to recover and live as best as possible even when sick. Or we can surrender, becoming irritable, not taking care of ourselves, and becoming upset. If we seek virtue and good and align ourselves with our conscience, that is, if everything that happens in our lives, whether good or bad, enriches our existence and makes us better, we will become masters of the four Stoic virtues. Good times will bring us joy, although we must remember that they will not be eternal. Bad times will strengthen and test us, and although they may be many, they will make us better people. Remember that these bad times will also pass and are as necessary, if not more, than the moments of well-being. Therefore, to practice Amor Fati, we also need the virtue of courage. We need to be brave to face all the storms that surprise us, and whoever practices Amor Fati will also master the virtues of justice and wisdom, learning to give each moment what it deserves, and above all, knowing the rational law that governs the world and makes our individual destiny the best gift we have to move towards a full life and true happiness. As you have seen, the doctrine of Amor Fati puts the four Stoic virtues into practice and invites us to give our best. It implies loving our own fate and understanding that our own life is the best and most beautiful opportunity we have to strive for virtue and a full existence. After all, don't you think a life without struggle and the pursuit of happiness would not be worth living? And isn't it true that there is no happiness without sacrifice and no surrender without acceptance of what we have been given? We must love our own fate and align our will to fulfill what reason tells us, for this is the stoic path to true and complete happiness. Four habits we should abandon. The man who recognizes the chains to which he is bound will be free because he can consciously break them. In the fast-paced and constantly changing world in which we live, we often get carried away, not only by counterproductive habits, but also destructive ones. The Stoics emphasize the importance of focusing on what we can control, freeing ourselves from the chains of uncontrolled emotions, erratic impulses, and lust. Today, I share with you six destructive habits I had myself and that are very common in the modern world. These habits can obstruct our mental peace, personal growth, and ability to live a virtuous life. Before going through these points, I ask you to try to be self-critical, looking at yourself in the third person. This will allow you to analyze which of these six bad habits are affecting you and then take full responsibility for facing them. The first habit is to procrastinate commitments. This is an insidious habit that we all tend to adopt. Although it may seem harmless, it has serious consequences. Procrastination means delaying something that could or should be done now. This results in a loss of time and energy as we constantly think about what needs to be done but do not act. Stoicism teaches us that procrastination can lead to not fulfilling our personal and professional obligations as well as harming the quality of our work, affecting our reputation 
and the trust others have in us. Valuing integrity and fulfilling duties was seen by the Stoics as one of the greatest disrespects someone can commit against themselves. The habit of procrastinating commitments is destructive. It goes against the principles of Stoicism, leading to loss of time, unfulfilled obligations, and increased stress and anxiety. We can combat it by practicing planning, self-discipline, and focusing on our responsibilities and values. The second habit is lying. Lying is a widely adopted habit in modern society, but it is deeply destructive. The liar is a victim of their own fears, and sooner or later will be caught by them. Lying harms truth and integrity. The Stoics valued honesty and truth as pillars of a virtuous life. When we lie, we distance ourselves from these ideals and compromise our own character. Additionally, lying diminishes the quality of relationships and results in loss of trust. Lies can erode the trust others have in us. When a lie is discovered, it is difficult to regain lost trust. Mutual trust and respect were fundamental for the Stoics in healthy and enriching relationships. The third habit is the lack of communication skills. Effective communication is an essential skill in our personal and professional relationships. It seems that we have lost the value of good communication skills. This is reflected in the poor conversations of today, where people are no longer interested in each other and do not truly listen to what the other person is saying. The lack of communication skills can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts. The Stoics recognize the importance of harmony and cooperation in our relationships. The fourth practice is the constant comparison with others. I know you are very competitive, even if unintentionally you want to do better than others. But this is a recurring habit that can undermine self-esteem and satisfaction with life. Constant comparison can lead to dissatisfaction and unhappiness as we always find someone who seems to have more success, wealth, or talent. The Stoics teach us to focus on our own development and appreciate what we have instead of constantly comparing ourselves to others. Constant comparison can cause us to lose our identity and authenticity as we might try to change who we are to fit into standards or expectations. These are just some of the habits we can work on overcoming always striving to live a life of virtue, wisdom, and inner tranquility. I invite you to reflect on these habits in your own life and to be truly self-critical. Recognizing and addressing these habits can be the first step towards a fuller and more authentic life. Remember that only the individual who recognizes the chains to which they are bound can free themselves from them. From here, it is you who build your own destiny. Have you ever wondered why you feel out of control when you overvalue what you cannot change? Marcus Aurelius, a great thinker of antiquity, taught us to focus on what we can influence, appreciating and valuing what we already have. He emphasized the importance of concentrating our efforts on the aspects of life that we can truly control. In the past, before we were bombarded by constant stimuli and intense social exposure provided by the internet, it seemed simpler to manage what was within our reach. This ancient wisdom still resonates today, showing us a path to a fuller and more authentic life. However, nowadays, with the surge of information, rapid communication and constant interconnection, controlling our destiny can seem more challenging. The bombardment of information and the influence of external opinions make it difficult to maintain focus on what we can truly control. In this changing context, the importance of finding ways to become independent and manage our destiny more effectively emerges. Instead of relying excessively on external factors, it is essential to learn to develop discipline and self-management. Recognizing what is within our hands to change and what is beyond our reach provides us with a clearer perspective and empowers us to focus on what truly matters. 
Control over our destiny does not mean having total influence over every outcome or situation, but rather the ability to shape our responses, make informed decisions, and exercise our power in areas where we can make an impact. By internalizing this approach, we become more masters of our actions and reactions, reducing our dependence on what escapes our control. Discover how to control your emotions and unlock your true potential with our Stoic Guide. In this video, I will try to help you practice the acceptance of fate so that you can be virtuous and happy. To do this, I will divide the video into two parts. First, I will try to explain what fate means to a Stoic and why it should be accepted. Then, I will give seven pieces of advice to put into practice and persevere gradually. Chapter 1. Do not leave everything in the hands of chance. The ancient Stoics believed that chance did not exist. Everything in the world functioned according to necessary and rational laws created by the gods themselves. Therefore, they understood the universe as a whole in perfect order and harmony, where everything that happened had an explanation, a purpose, and a reason. For the Stoics, this rational law that governs the universe is also present in the human being, in their reason. This allows the person to know what is rational and virtuous. Thus, whoever follows what their conscience dictates becomes rational and virtuous, while those who deviate from this universal law become irrational and move away from virtue. The rational plan that the cosmos has established for each of us is what we call fate. Our individual destiny is part of this harmonious whole that is the universe. Therefore, everything that happens to us, whether good or bad, even if we cannot understand or control it, is necessary and has an explanation. Everything follows a logic and has meaning, although we may not always perceive it. This is why, even in the worst moments, we need to strive to see beyond ourselves, accepting the established order and living with serenity. This is what it means to love our fate. However, it is very important to distinguish between acceptance and resignation. Resignation is negative and implies refusing to act in the face of what displeases us. On the other hand, acceptance is positive recognizing what is there and guiding action according to the things that happen. As you can feel, a Stoic avoids resignation and seeks acceptance. In acceptance, the Stoic dichotomy of control is fundamental. Generally, events in the universe such as health or illness, disasters or miracles, life or death, are not under our control and we cannot change them. This is why our hearts should not be affected by them. However, what is under our control is our judgment about what happens and our will. As Epicurus said, well, the will can control itself, but nothing else can control it. We have the great power to choose what we do and how we react to the circumstances and desires imposed upon us. We have the great power to choose between fleeing from our own fate or accepting it and facing it as the path that has been designated for us and in which we must seek our happiness. This is what Stoic freedom consists of, choosing to accept our fate and align our will with virtue and good, or on the other hand, choosing to reject our reality and seek vice and evil. The essence of good and evil lies in the attitude of the will, says Epicurus, and Marcus Aurelius would add that with regard to things that are truly good, such as virtue and justice, they are within the power of man, provided by the gods, so that he can avoid them if he wishes. In any situation, it is in our hands to react by seeking good or evil. For example, if we are ill, we can fight to try to recover as best as possible even when ill, or we can surrender, becoming irascible, not taking care of ourselves and becoming irritated. If we seek virtue and good and align ourselves with our conscience, that is, if everything that happens in our lives, whether good or bad, 
enriches our existence and makes us better, we will become masters of the four stoic virtues. Good moments will bring us joy, although we must remember that they will not be eternal. Bad moments will strengthen us and test us, and although they may be very difficult, they will make us better people in the end. Remember that these bad moments will also pass and are as necessary, if not more, than the moments of well-being. Therefore, to control our destiny, we also need the virtue of courage. We need to be brave to face all the storms that surprise us and assail us. Thus, whoever practices Amor Fati will also control the virtues of justice and wisdom, will learn to give each moment what it deserves, and above all, will know the rational law that governs the world and makes our individual destiny the best gift we have to move towards a full life and true happiness. As you have seen, the doctrine of Amor Fati puts the four stoic virtues into practice and invites us to give our best. It involves loving our own fate and understanding that our own life is the best and most beautiful opportunity we have to strive for virtue and a full existence. Don't you think that a life without struggle and the pursuit of happiness would not be worth living? Furthermore, isn't it true that there is no happiness without sacrifice and no surrender without acceptance of what we have been given? We must love our own fate and our will to fulfill our goals and achieve continuous growth on the path of virtue and happiness. What reason tells us is that this is the stoic path to true and complete happiness. I would like to share with you several stoic quotes about Amor Fati. Seneca says that fate leads those who accept it and drags those who refuse to recognize it. He also points out that there is no one less fortunate than he who is averse to adversity, for he does not have the opportunity to be tested. For his part, Marcus Aurelius writes that it is characteristic of man to love and seek what fate has assigned and prepared for him. And Epictetus might add, Do not seek for events to happen as you wish, but wish for events to happen as they do, and your life will go well. Chapter 2. Eliminating Destructive Habits The man who recognizes the chains to which he is bound will be free because he can consciously break them. In the fast-paced and constantly changing world in which we live, we often get carried away not only by counterproductive habits, but also destructive ones. The Stoics emphasize the importance of focusing on what we can control, freeing ourselves from the chains of uncontrolled emotions, erratic impulses, and lust. Today, I share with you six destructive habits I had myself and that are very common in the modern world. These habits can obstruct our mental peace, personal growth, and ability to live a virtuous life. Before reviewing these points, I ask you to try to be self-critical, observing yourself from an external point of view. This will allow you to analyze which of these bad habits are affecting you and then take full responsibility for facing them. The first habit is to postpone commitments. This is an insidious habit that we all tend to adopt. Although it may seem harmless, it has serious consequences. Procrastination implies delaying something that could or should be done now, resulting in a loss of time and energy as we constantly think about what needs to be done, but do not act. Stoicism teaches us that postponing can lead to not fulfilling our personal obligations, harming the quality of our work and affecting our reputation and the trust others have in us. Valuing integrity and fulfilling duties was seen by the Stoics as one of the greatest disrespects someone can commit against themselves. Procrastination results in increased stress and anxiety as tasks accumulate and deadlines approach. This constant tension affects our mental and physical health, taking us away from mental clarity and inner peace. Imagine you have an important project with a deadline, and instead of dividing the work into manageable parts and working consistently on it, you delay and leave it for the last moment. The pressure mounts, 
and now you are stressed and overwhelmed, struggling to meet the deadline. Planning the work and fulfilling duties is a favor you do to yourself. It is more viable to divide the work over several days rather than accumulating everything in one moment. The habit of postponing commitments is destructive, going against the principles of stoicism, leading to loss of time, unfulfilled obligations and increased stress and anxiety. We can combat it by practicing planning, self-discipline and focusing on our responsibilities and values. To avoid it, I recommend not promising under a strong emotion, especially when you are euphoric. This is because the emotions of the moment tend to be the basis of the decision rather than clear thinking. Before committing, evaluate carefully in moments of solitude. Do not promise anything when you are happy and avoid impulsive decisions. The second habit is lying. Lying is a widely adopted habit in modern society, but it is deeply destructive. The liar is a victim of their own fears and sooner or later will be caught by them. Lying harms truth and integrity. The Stoics valued honesty and truth as pillars of a virtuous life. When we lie, we distance ourselves from these ideals and compromise our own character. Additionally, lying diminishes the quality of relationships and results in loss of trust. Lies can erode the trust others have in us. When a lie is discovered, it is difficult to regain lost trust. Mutual trust and respect were fundamental for the Stoics in healthy and enriching relationships. The third destructive habit is poor communication skills. Effective communication is an essential skill in our personal and professional relationships. It seems that we have lost the value of good communication skills. This is reflected in today's poor conversations where people are no longer truly interested in the other person and do not genuinely listen to what the other person is saying. The lack of communication skills can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts. The Stoics recognize the importance of harmony in our relationships. Poor communication can endanger these ideals. If we do not know how to communicate effectively, we will have difficulty expressing our needs and feelings, leading to dissatisfaction, frustration and resentment. The Stoics valued authenticity and self-expression, which are crucial for having quality conversations. We have a natural inclination to associate and communicate effectively. Conversations should be valuable exchanges between participants. Talking with another person should be enriching and not pointless. Not knowing how to communicate is a destructive habit that can lead to misunderstandings, conflicts and difficulties in expressing our needs and feelings. I recommend expanding your communication skills and vocabulary by reading or consuming valuable content. The practice of active listening has greatly benefited me. Instead of thinking about how to respond, focus on the conversation and pay attention to what the person is saying. This will make the dialogue flow and make the other person feel valued while talking to you. With continuous practice, your communication will reach excellence. The fourth habit is constant comparison with others. I know you are very competitive, even if unintentionally, and you want to do better than others. But this is a recurring habit that can undermine self-esteem and satisfaction with life. Constant comparison can lead to dissatisfaction and unhappiness, as we always find someone who seems to have more success, wealth or talent. The Stoics teach us to focus on our own development and appreciate what we have instead of constantly comparing ourselves to others. Constant comparison can cause us to lose our identity and authenticity because we might try to change who we are to fit into standards or expectations. Remember that this is not helpful in the long run as you could end up pretending to be someone you are not. The Stoics encourage us to be true to ourselves and live according to our own values and principles. The fifth habit is seeking external blame in our lives. In modern society, it is common to see people looking for external reasons for what happens in their lives instead of taking personal responsibility. 
This approach eliminates control and autonomy, as by blaming others for circumstances, we remove control over our lives. The Stoics emphasize the importance of recognizing what is within our control and what is not. Blaming others distances us from this understanding. This habit can lead to a victim mentality and promote emotional dependence, making us highly dependent on others for our stability. When we seek external blame in our lives, we lose the opportunity to learn from our mistakes and grow as individuals. This habit of personal responsibility reminds us to understand and accept what is within our control and take responsibility for it, avoiding the trap of blaming others for our circumstances. As valuable individuals, we are called to be aware of these behaviors and work to overcome them. Strive to live a life of virtue, wisdom, and inner tranquility. I invite you to reflect on these habits in your own life and be truly self-critical. Remember that only the individual who recognizes the chains to which they are bound can free themselves from them. From here, you are the one who builds your own path. Moral evolution does not consist of completely erasing old rules, but in critically examining them to decide which should remain, which should go away, and which new principles should be adopted. Chapter 3. Keeping a Personal Journal Keeping a journal is a powerful tool used by Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. Dedicate a few moments each morning to write about your intentions, emotions and observations. By doing this, you will create a beacon of wisdom and warmth that will guide you through the challenges of modern life. As we navigate the ever-changing daily landscape, we are likely to face moments that test our determination. But don't worry, Stoicism has the answer. Through a series of Stoic strategies, you will maintain balance, cultivate resilience, and embark on the journey of life with grace and strength. When stress arises, remember that wisdom is within you. Seek refuge in reason and reflection. Focus your energy on what you can control and let go of what is not in your hands. In this way, you will respond to stress with composure, resilience and wisdom. The primary task in life is simply this, to identify and separate things so that you can clearly distinguish the external and uncontrollable from what depends on your choices and control. Where to seek good and evil? Not outside the uncontrollable, but within yourself and in your choices. Remember Epictetus's words on your path to gratitude and resilience. Stoicism will guide you with its eternal wisdom. Wake up with the certainty that each day is an opportunity to grow, learn and strengthen. Embrace life with purpose and clarity on the Stoic path to a full and meaningful life. Turn distractions into opportunities for productivity. In the whirlwind of modern life, distractions are constantly lurking. But, as a brave Stoic, cultivate the virtue of temperance. Practice self-discipline and moderation. By accepting these distractions, gently direct your attention to the task at hand. This will nurture your inner calm and allow you to harness the power of your mind to achieve your goals. When interacting with others, manifest the stoic virtues of justice, wisdom and compassion. Each encounter offers the opportunity to leave a positive and lasting impression. Be mindful of the impact of your words and actions on those around you. Through each interaction, learn, grow and deepen your understanding of the human experience. To repeat out loud, today I will face interference, ingratitude, insolence, disloyalty, ill will and selfishness. All of this is due to the offender's ignorance about good or evil. But as for me, I have long recognized the nature of good and its nobility, the nature of evil and its pettiness, and also the nature of the offender himself, who is my brother, not in a physical sense, but as a fellow human being endowed with reason and a portion of the divine. Therefore, none of this can harm me because no one can implicate me in something degrading. 
I cannot be angry with my brother or be annoyed with him either, for he and I were born to work together, like the two hands, feet or eyelids of a man, or the upper and lower rows of his teeth. Obstructing each other is contrary to the law of nature, and irritation or aversion is a form of obstruction. Marcus Aurelius teaches us to embrace adversity and flourish in resilience. On the journey of life, we encounter unexpected challenges in times of adversity, which can either strengthen or break us. As brave Stoics, we see these challenges as opportunities for growth. Cultivate courage and wisdom to face adversity with grace, practicing negative visualization. Trust in the inner resilience you have nurtured on your Stoic path. In this way, you will transform trials into valuable lessons, steps on your path to growth and personal fulfillment. Prepare for a night full of wisdom and reflection. As the sun sets and the day comes to an end, turn your gaze inward. Reflect on the day, on your interactions and the moments of learning that arose. In this way, you will prepare to face tomorrow with renewed strength and clarity, ready to continue your stoic journey. Chapter 4. Starting the day well. I wanted to talk about something that happens to all of us in the morning when we wake up. Most of us do not feel like going to work or school. We spend our days wishing for the time to leave work to come home and relax until the next day, or we are constantly thinking about the weekend and the anxiety we feel for its arrival. Hating Mondays is common, as we know we will face a difficult week of work and responsibilities. This unpleasant feeling causes people to spend their days completely unmotivated and unwilling to do anything. Unfortunately, this behavior can result in depression or great unhappiness for those who suffer from it. In Stoicism, Marcus Aurelius wrote the following, When it is difficult for you to get out of bed at dawn, remember this, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain about if I am going to do what I was born to do? Or was I born to curl up and keep warm? After this reflection, Marcus Aurelius dialogues with himself and responds, It is more comfortable to stay in bed than to work. So was I born to feel comfortable. Don't you see how plants, birds, ants, spiders and bees perform their individual tasks to put the world in order as best as possible? And you are not willing to do what is expected of you as a human being. We need to sleep at some point, but nature has imposed a limit on this, just as it has with eating and drinking, and you have already rested enough. He continues to affirm that we do not love ourselves enough because, if we did, we would also love our nature and what it demands of us. People who love what they do dedicate themselves to it, sometimes forgetting to wash or eat. They have more respect for their own nature than the sculptor for sculpture, the dancer for dance, or the miser for money. When they are truly immersed in what they do, they prefer to give up eating and sleeping rather than abandon their artistic practices. When Marcus Aurelius talks about work, he refers to the actions that a human being must perform in their daily life, not just professional work. With this reflection, we are encouraged to take responsibility for our time and actions. Imagine if he had not acted this way, he probably would not be considered one of the five good emperors of the Roman Empire. As an emperor, he had to lead the government and could not leave his tasks undone, as all the citizens of the Roman Empire depended on him. This can also be applied to our lives. We were not born to be like immobile plants without responsibilities. We are human beings and must act as such. Do not let the temptation of momentary pleasures cloud your judgment. There is no better feeling than knowing you acted correctly and responsibly. Nothing compares to the feeling of a job well done. You need to get up, you need to start working. Do not abandon your tasks. The time is now because you do not know how much time you have. Marcus Aurelius wrote this in his personal journal to remind himself every day. 
We should do the same. When in the morning you do not feel like getting up and fulfilling your responsibilities, or when you are constantly thinking about the weekend, remember these words of Marcus Aurelius. Do you have any tricks to avoid these negative thoughts? I look forward to your response in the comments. Here are 10 Stoic quotes from famous Stoics to help you start the day well. 1. The only way to be happy is to stop worrying about things beyond our control. 2. Start the day remembering that inner strength is more valuable than anything external. 3. We are not disturbed by things, but by the view we take of them. 4. From another, it is not my misery. 5. The secret of happiness is freedom, and the secret of freedom is courage. 6. Do not expect events to happen as you wish. Accept them as they happen so you can live in peace. 7. It is not things themselves that disturb people, but their judgments about those things. 8. Life is short, and the only proper time to seek our happiness is the present. 9. It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. 10. Rise with determination, lie down with satisfaction. These quotes can serve as powerful reminders of stoic principles and help guide your thinking and behavior throughout the day. If you are watching this video, it is because procrastination is a fundamental problem in your life. In my case, most of my problems arose because of procrastination. When you leave what should be done and continue delaying things, all kinds of problems begin to arise. Your productivity decreases, anxiety appears in your life, you start avoiding responsibilities, and the worst of all is the constant feeling that you are not doing what you should. The Stoics were very attentive to procrastination. We have examples of Stoic philosophers like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius who had many responsibilities in their lives and could not afford to procrastinate. It is not easy because we tend to prefer instant gratification instead of making an effort, as discipline and overcoming procrastination are complementary tasks. If you are watching this video, it is because you want to change you want to start being productive and master your mind and actions. Overcoming procrastination will make you happier because you will feel at peace with yourself by acting responsibly. It is impressive that Marcus Aurelius had the same 24 hours in a day that you and I have to do his work and fulfill his responsibilities. How did he find time to be emperor, govern the most extensive and powerful empire of antiquity? be a philosopher, writer, care for his wife, create laws, attend trials, lead armies, and guide the Roman people to overcome a terrible plague, all without succumbing to the vices or temptations that other emperors faced. The key to Marcus Aurelius's success was that he maintained a designed routine in his life that allowed him to overcome laziness and avoid procrastination. In the end, the key to not procrastinating is having a routine. Marcus Aurelius transformed all his responsibilities into fundamental parts of his life, just as we need to eat, wash and sleep. He made these responsibilities essential aspects to the point of not being able to live without fulfilling them. The Stoics understood that we are what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not an act, but a habit. For example, for Marcus Aurelius, the day began early at dawn. When he woke up, he understood that he got up to do the work of a human being. There was no time to stay in bed. He started the day by writing in his personal journal, dedicating a few minutes to jotting down his thoughts and organizing his mind, reminding himself of what was important. Then, he prepared to face his responsibilities and the people around him. He told himself that the people he would meet would be disrespectful and ungrateful, would try to irritate and frustrate him. Marcus Aurelius knew he could not let these people affect his judgment and happiness. He was clear that he had to act as he considered correct. After that, Marcus Aurelius started with his most important responsibilities, 
because he wanted to fulfill them when he was rested and ready to work. He focused on the task at hand as a Roman, acting as if it were the most important thing. As he said in his meditations, as you can observe in your routine, there was no room for procrastination. Chapter 5. Strong Mentality We suffer more in imagination than in reality. In the city of Cyprus in 300 BC, there lived a prosperous merchant named Zeno. While traveling from Phoenicia to Piraeus, his ship sank along with all its cargo. Due to this single event, which was completely out of Zeno's control, this man, who was once very wealthy, suddenly became poor. Imagine if you were Zeno. How would you react if the work of your entire life was lost due to natural forces? What would be the appropriate reaction? Would you become angry? Would you feel that life had deceived you? For most of us, these would be normal reactions, but not for Zeno, the father of Stoicism. A small adjustment lasts an eternity, and a small change in mentality can produce greater and more impactful changes. Furthermore, the essence of Stoicism is the very definition of acceptance and indifference. After reading the works of Socrates and other great philosophers, Zeno created and taught Stoicism. According to Zeno, although we have little control over what happens to us, we have control over how it affects us. We must use this control with great effectiveness. Instead of lamenting, Zeno focused on maintaining calm in the situation, staying calm and neutral despite his dilemma. Nowadays, people inadvertently see Stoics as imperturbable individuals, people who do not usually experience extreme emotions such as fits of anger or anxiety. But the original idea of Stoicism was much deeper. More than describing people without emotions, Stoicism was a way of seeing, describing and understanding the world. It was a way of life that endured through the centuries. The philosophy can be applied to current situations in the same way it was applied thousands of years ago, and its benefits are equally impactful. Stoicism allows us to process negative emotions and adverse experiences, transforming them into thoughts that provide us with a unique perspective of the world. Perspective is everything, and each person in the world has different experiences and therefore different perspectives on things. Just as Stoics gathered, discussed, and taught philosophy in public places, their general philosophy was widely known. They believed that Stoic principles could greatly benefit everyone, from slaves to emperors. Some of the most notable Stoics in the world include Epictetus, who was a freed slave, Seneca, a renowned statesman, and Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and one of the most powerful men who ever lived. The early Stoics practiced what they preached, avoiding all forms of segregation and leading the fight against inequality. They even coined the word cosmopolitan, which literally means citizen of the world. At the time of the foundation of Stoicism, women were not allowed in philosophy, but the Stoics disagreed with this. Musonius Rufus, Epictetus's master, once said that not only do men have a natural desire and inclination for virtue, but women also delight in noble and just actions no less than men and reject the opposite of these actions. So, why do so many people adopt Stoicism as a way of life? In a world full of unexpected events, our emotions tend to obstruct our path. In fact, we are not sad because bad things happen to us, but because bad and unexpected things happen. Rain is a good thing. It waters plants, provides water for livestock, and maintains a cool and humid temperature. But when we are caught in a torrential rain without an umbrella, it is never a good experience. So why don't we cry when it starts raining? Because although the situation is bad, we have learned to expect it to rain. It is inevitable. We cannot control the weather. In the end, the rain passes and the sun returns. Stoicism teaches us that, in the same way, 
we must expect all bad things to happen. One of the Stoic exercises is voluntary discomfort. This exercise helps cultivate gratitude and resilience. It consists of practicing small deprivations, such as sleeping on the kitchen floor, taking cold showers when you usually take hot ones, eating only potatoes for a few days. This exercise helps you understand that no matter how difficult things are, you will survive and possibly thrive if your mentality is right. By enduring these uncomfortable situations, we are indirectly preparing our mentality for future adversities. In the current state of the world, where advertising constantly makes us believe that we will only be happy if we have the best, a specific appearance or a certain amount of money, the message of stoicism is now more important than ever. We are born into the world without knowing much about anything. We grow up learning things at home, at school, and by observing the world for ourselves. The problem is that these three sources of knowledge often teach us different things. We need to internalize all this knowledge. If we do so inadvertently, we can create unrealistic expectations for our lives, which eventually leave us disappointed and unsatisfied. This is not a way to live. We must focus on improving ourselves, doing things for ourselves and only for that reason. Tying any external hope or secondary attachment to the actions we take almost always leads to disappointment. Most of the time, we try to fill this void with external things, spending money on a luxurious car, a house. We do all these things for their external value and not for their internal value. Stoicism teaches that on the contrary, we should judge the success of our work according to the amount of effort we put in and not on the results of our external hopes. We must trust the process. Living with less means, freeing ourselves from the social chains in which we entangle ourselves. This is the way to solve our problems with happiness. We must practice self-esteem, redirecting our definition of value to things we can control. We can stop obsessing over things we cannot control and, in general, lead a much happier and more satisfying life. Stoicism helps us navigate beyond past and present storms towards calmer and more peaceful waters. After all, Stoic philosophy flourished in different eras, but its truths have spanned centuries. Today, its lessons resonate deeply, offering guidance and strength to face the challenges of the modern world. Ancient philosophy also teaches us to embrace emotional resilience and acceptance. Through the words of philosophers, we learn to find peace and serenity, even in turbulent times. Stoics like Seneca, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius believed that true happiness did not lie in avoiding difficulties, but in cultivating virtue and self-control, even in the face of the most adverse circumstances. They emphasized the importance of distinguishing between what is within our control, such as our attitudes, choices and values, and what is not, such as external events and others' behavior. By focusing only on what we can control and accepting what we cannot, we can find lasting inner peace. The search for purpose and meaning is a human constant. By exploring the works of existentialist philosophers, we discover how to forge an authentic path aligned with our deepest values. Stoicism also reminds us of the importance of relationships and community. By studying thinkers like Aristotle, we are guided to build genuine connections and nurture bonds that enrich our journey. While the focus of the Stoics centers on developing personal virtue and self-mastery, they do not advocate isolation or indifference towards others. On the contrary, the Stoics believe that interpersonal relationships and communal life are fundamental aspects of achieving virtue and happiness. Cicero, for example, wrote extensively about friendship and the importance of cultivating genuine and sincere relationships. He argued that friendship was one of the most precious goods in life and that we should choose friends who share similar values and goals. Additionally, he emphasized the need to be useful to others 
and to contribute positively to society. Therefore, both Stoicism and other philosophical systems recognize the importance of human relationships and building a healthy community in the pursuit of a full and meaningful life. They encourage us to cultivate authentic connections that contribute to our moral and spiritual growth, enriching our personal journey. By incorporating the ancient wisdom of ancient philosophy, we are armed with tools to face any challenge and live with authenticity, purpose, and strength. Chapter 6. Controlling Procrastination You may be wondering how you can act like Marcus Aurelius and overcome procrastination. How can you prepare mentally? What tricks can you follow? Next, I will explain seven tricks that have personally helped me avoid procrastination. They are divided into two parts. The first deals with preparing the mind to avoid procrastination, and the second with actions we can take to overcome it. Part 1. Preparing the mind. Change your focus. Procrastination is a first world problem we procrastinate because we can afford it. We must increase the sense of urgency in fulfilling our responsibilities. By procrastinating and setting a deadline to complete what we must do, we end up doing it on the last day, when there is little time to meet the deadline. It seems that when the last day comes, laziness disappears, we become productive, and we act as we should and this happens due to the sense of urgency. Setting our own deadlines to fulfill our responsibilities would increase our urgency to work and help overcome procrastination. We could even count on a family member or friend to help us meet this deadline, establishing a consequence if not. Part 2. Avoiding low-level distractions Generally, when we procrastinate, the actions that replace what we should do are often low-level distractions. This means that we waste time doing something that does not benefit us. We must realize that, besides not adding anything to us, we also do not fully enjoy this distraction because deep down, we know we should be doing something else. Therefore, not only does it not help us at all, but we also do not fully immerse ourselves in this distraction. Thus, we should work first and enjoy later. Every procrastinator knows that the hardest part is always starting the task. Once you start, you overcome the most challenging part. Force yourself to start. Do not think about how long it will take to finish your task, or even think about finishing it or the difficulty of what needs to be done. Simply start with the first step, because it is the hardest, but also the most important, and will give you momentum to move on to the second step. Having a procrastinator's attitude also has its advantages, because once you start, you do not want to stop, as you are aware of the difficulty of restarting or resuming the task. One of the tricks I use in my life to take the first step is the five-second rule. It consists of counting from five to zero, and when you reach zero, you start the task. The idea is to clear your mind, not think about anything else but starting. Count from five and start without thinking. Personally, this trick helps me a lot in life. When I want to do something that bothers me, I count backward from five and do it without thinking. The Pomodoro Technique. This is a trick to divide your work time into more manageable portions, making it easier to tackle your tasks. It is difficult to start working if you think you have five hours ahead, but if you divide that time using the Pomodoro technique, you can manage your work more easily. The technique involves working for 25 minutes straight and then taking a five minute break. This would be a Pomodoro. After four Pomodoros, take a 20-minute break and repeat the process. Everyone is capable of working for 25 minutes straight, and by doing four Pomodoros, we work for an hour and 40 minutes with 100% concentration and then rest for 20 minutes. Eliminate distractions. Our brain always seeks the easiest path. If you have your cell phone near your workspace, a video game, or anything that can distract you, 
eliminate all these distractions from your workspace. Design an environment that makes procrastination difficult, where the only thing you can do is finish your task. Start by identifying what prevents you from doing the work and eliminate these distractions from your workspace to avoid making procrastination easy. Remember that we need discipline to effectively apply all these tricks. Chapter 7. Solitude The Stoics saw solitude as a tool for self-discovery and personal growth. Today, we will explore 10 benefits of solitude from a Stoic perspective and how you can apply them in your modern life. Appreciation of Solitude in Stoicism In Stoicism, there is a deep appreciation for solitude. Contrary to what modern society often perceives, the Stoics did not see solitude as a source of sadness, but as a valuable space for introspection, self-awareness and moral growth. In a noisy world full of distractions, the Stoics saw solitude as a wise teacher that offers moments of peace and isolation, where we can face our true feelings, desires and values without the masks we wear in society. They embraced self-sufficiency and emotional control in solitude, seeing it as a way to develop this self-sufficiency. Because when we are alone, we do not depend on others' opinions or expectations to find peace and happiness. Deep self-knowledge. An important theme in Stoic philosophy is deep self-knowledge. Solitude provides a safe space to look within and explore the hidden corners of our minds and hearts that we rarely consider. Imagine solitude as a mirror that reflects the true self, allowing us to face the truth within us and discover what truly motivates us. We observe our emotional reactions, fears, aspirations and doubts. Solitude allows us to see ourselves without external judgments, without falsehoods or pretenses. Internal Dialogue a powerful aspect of self-awareness is internal dialogue. Imagine yourself sitting alone as an intellectual and compassionate friend, reflecting on your choices, desires and mistakes. This sincere dialogue helps us understand ourselves better and allows us to make decisions more aligned with our true nature and values. Development of Autarchy the Stoics believed in the importance of cultivating an inner strength that is not affected by the vicissitudes of the external world. Solitude plays a significant role in this process because it allows us to disconnect from distractions and external noise to focus on ourselves and reduce external impact. Independence can be seen as armor that protects us from external influences. Opportunity for self-control. The Stoics believed that one of the greatest achievements of self-sufficiency was self-control. When we are alone, we need to deal with our own emotional reactions and impulses, learning to observe them without automatically yielding to them. This self-control allows us to make conscious and ethical decisions instead of automatically reacting to situations. Facing Emotions Solitude can be a valuable ally in the process of understanding and wisely managing our emotions. The Stoics understood that emotions were part of the human experience, but they also recognized the importance of not being enslaved by them. Solitude provides a safe space to explore our emotions without external judgments or pressures. Imagine solitude as a laboratory to observe your emotions. When we are alone, we have the opportunity to see our emotions objectively instead of being carried away by them. Clarity and decision-making. Solitude can be a reliable guide in the decision-making process. Often we find ourselves overwhelmed by the decisions we must make and the confusion caused by external opinions can make it difficult to choose correctly. Solitude offers a space of silence and reflection to calmly consider our options. Refuge. Imagine solitude as a refuge in the midst of a storm. In difficult times, we can withdraw from external voices and expectations to find internal comfort. Solitude offers a safe space to deal with our emotions, 
reflect on the situation, and find the strength to face challenges with courage. In short, solitude allows us to transform adversity into an opportunity to cultivate virtues such as patience, self-discipline, and resilience. By exploring the ancient wisdom of Stoic philosophy, we are armed with tools to face any challenge and live with authenticity, purpose, and strength. I sincerely hope this message has been helpful. I want to sincerely congratulate you for making it this far and completing the video. This means you want to improve as a person. Now, if any part of this message has been helpful to you, leave us your like and comment, helping the algorithm recommend it to someone who needs it at this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And if you look through the videos we've already uploaded, you're sure to find something to take with you. Have a good day.